Hello and welcome, thanks for tuning in and today I got my hands on another retro gaming console. Now we have seen a couple of these featured on this channel recently and though this one basically does the same thing, there is something very unique about this one that all the TV box manufacturers should implement in their models. This is the Super Console X3 Retro Gaming Console. This model offers 114,557 retro games via the King Hank emulation platform on the MU Alec operating system via an SD card. So in this video, we'll take a look at the retro gaming system, why I claim that the box is unique, I'll benchmark its hardware, and we'll walk through its intuitive operating system, so stay tuned. So due to the fact that it's an Android TV box being used as a console, the contents of the package are basically the same as in your standard Android box purchase. You have the box itself, one infrared remote control, one HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps power adapter, you get two micro SD cards, one with the retro gaming system and the other with Core Alec. You get a pair of gamepad controllers and they are provided user guides for the retro gaming platform and for the gamepad controllers. The design of this box is one where we in the TV box community have been longing for since the issue of low performance due to overheating became a problem. To the top, it has a built-in cooling fan on top of a special riser where you can remove four screws for easy cleaning or replacing the fan by simply unplugging it from a special jack and I can't express enough how pleased I am to see this implemented in a TV box and in just a moment we'll see how it impacts its operating temperature both in an idle state and during gaming. This design also facilitates higher clocking of its CPU speed without worry about damage due to poor cooling. For input-output peripherals, to its rear has one HDMI port, one optical audio, one Ethernet LAN, one AV port, and its DC power input jack. To the side has one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0, and a micro SD card reader. At the front you have an LED display, and below the box has hard plastic feet with ventilation holes. So when you purchase from the AliExpress store, you are purchasing first as a retro gaming console and second as a full-fledged Android TV box, so that's what you're actually paying for. And together with the Core Alec micro SD card, you get three operating systems in one purchase. So I'll first start with the retro gaming platform. With the SD card inserted, it will automatically boot into the King Hank emulation station running on MU Alec. Once booted, you are presented with 68 emulators and a total of 114,557 games. So before we take a look at the emulators, there are two things I would like to point out. Firstly, it starts in the crystal theme, which in my opinion does not have the best layout suited to my needs. However, you can connect the console to the internet via Wi-Fi or LAN cable, and under updates you can download and install additional themes. I personally like the Alcaful Solar theme as it has a much better layout. It also starts with front-end music, which I also find a bit annoying, and you can disable it under sound settings under the main menu. The next thing you should note is that it starts in 720p resolution, but you can change that resolution to 1080p at 60Hz with no issues. They have also removed the option to select 4K, which became a problem in other consoles I've reviewed previously. After testing its Wi-Fi and Bluetooth feature, they work without issues and I connected my own Bluetooth gamepad and mapped its buttons under the controller mapping feature. You can also use your own gamepad via USB dongle or wired, so this means you don't have to use the included controllers if you don't like them. Let's now take a look at these 68 emulators.
So out of this vast library of games, you have popular game titles such as Mario 64, Street Fighter EX2+, Killer Instinct 2, Time Crisis, Run and Gun 2 Alien Trilogy Twisted Metal 4 Power Stone 2 Samurai Shodong 5 Special Tekken 3 and Capcom vs SNK 2 So if you are from the 90s, in the era where you would spend all your lunch money to purchase coins to play your favorite arcade games, or you and your friends would all gather at one of your friend's house as he was the only one who had a gaming console, then you would enjoy playing all your favorite retro arcade and console titles on this device for free with unlimited coins and lives at your disposal. So that's basically all there is to know about its retro gaming platform and if there is any game in this list you would like to know about post it in the comments below. And I'll now remove the SD card and allow the box to boot directly into its Android operating system. So for its Android operating system, it comes with a custom Android TV OS version from the developers of Slimbox TV. This firmware delivers a value for money as it uses Android 9 TV OS as its base operating system and has all of the unique features seen in popular models such as Yugoos and TOX1 and even more. Features include 4K display up to 2160p at 60Hz 12-bit. You get HDR display with Auto HDR feature. You get Dolby Vision. Built-in screen rotation to portrait mode when used with vertical monitors. Advanced picture color display settings. Automatic frame rate switching with picture optimization similar to AI upscaling, the first I've seen outside of the Nvidia Shield. It has 55 various languages. It has advanced mouse pointer settings with an experimental feature which uses mouse clicks as touch input which can come in handy when playing touchscreen games. Under sound options, you have advanced features to control USB audio which is another first I've seen in a TV box allowing you to use a USB microphone. And you have advanced surround sound audio options and I'll test these in just a moment. You have power key definition options and home screen options where in one of the options you have the ability to change the launcher. Then you have some more unique features under Slingbox TV settings. These include a root switch, navigation bar and status bar options. Built-in hardware monitor feature. Under interface, you have the option to adjust the display size.
you can allow notifications in the status bar. You can change the style of the cursor, which is another first for a firmware. You can change the font style and font size of the interface. You have Samba server settings and you have local updates. So this firmware, being a hybrid firmware by far, breaks the record for the most features in a firmware to date. So let's do a quick run through of its system and hardware information and let's see what's driving this firmware. The model of the box itself is the HK1 box. It runs on 4GB of DDR3 RAM and 32GB of internal storage. Its CPU is the Amlogic S905X3 and it's clocked at 1.9GHz configured in 32-bit mode. Its GPU is the Mali G31 with OpenGL 3.2. It has a tool band 2.4 plus 5 GHz Wi-Fi. Its operating system is Android 9 Pi and you have root access. You have Vulkan GPU support version 1.1. With its internal cooling fan, its CPU idles around 32 degrees Celsius, one of the lowest recorded for a TV box and we'll see how low it maintains during gaming. And it has decoders for the playback of 4K HDR videos and surround sound audio formats such as Dolby Atmos and DTS Audio. And that's its system and hardware information. When it comes to streaming in Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus and Amazon Prime Video, this firmware is not Google certified as it only has Google Wide Vine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. So the services are limited to their standard resolutions only. With the provided root switch, you can select whether you want the box rooted or not. Here it shows that the box is rooted. So the Android TV version of YouTube plays up to 4K 1440p resolution only with HDR activating on my TV. When I use the YouTube Smart TV version, it plays up to 4K 2160p resolution with HDR. The firmware has the official version of Miracast and you can cast your mobile devices in HD quality with your favorite TV casting or screen sharing app. I'll now do a quick run through of my 4K videos to test for 4K HDR and HLG HDR playback. To head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points. The mosaic of the Camp Nou and the Barcelona hymn being sung as referee. So the video split smoothly with HDR and HLG HDR triggering on my TV. For surround sound audio, the box can successfully play Dolby Atmos, DTS X, DTS HD Master Audio, Dolby Surround, and Dolby True HD. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object based cinematic audio. This is the left channel. 
and for a final demonstration, I'll play one Android game to test its graphics performance and to see what impact its internal cooling fan has on its temperature during gaming. So with the Mali G31 GPU with Vulkan support, its graphics handling is pretty good and its internal cooling fan keeps temperatures at around 51 degrees Celsius which is also fantastic. So let's now take a look at its benchmarks and see where it places on my rankings chart. First, its RAM and internal storage. It has a RAM copy speed of 2691 megabytes per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 139 megabytes per second and a write speed of 80. Next, it's Wi-Fi and Ethernet LAN speeds based on a network speed of 154 megabytes per second. The 5 GHz band achieved 100% of my network speed, the 2.4 GHz band achieved 29% and the LAN port which is not a gigabit LAN port achieved 61%. Its Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark resulted in a score of 765 single core and 2101 multi core. In its graphics benchmark, it only qualified for the Slingshot Extreme test and it scored 333. And in the Antutu benchmark, it scored 75,353. So let's now see where it places on the rankings chart. So after entering the scores on my rankings chart, the Super Console X3 is at position 56 in reference to its Antutu benchmark score. And to review its placement, you can view this chart on my blog where you can compare various benchmarks and features. I also provide price comparison links right here. See the link in the description below this video. And for one final feature, if you insert the 4GB SD card, you will boot directly into the Core Alec operating system. So viewers, there you have it. This review was more of a gaming console review than a TV box review. I just added the Android box segment for those who would like to do more with the device than just play retro games. In my opinion, this is one of the best retro gaming console I've encountered and I'm really impressed with its design and long list of unique features you get with the Slimbox TV firmware. So if you are interested in this model, which I highly recommend, you can get it using the link in the description below at a very affordable price with an available coupon. So give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and click the notifications bell to keep in the loop as to when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. The link in the description is my affiliate link and if you use it to view the product, you support this channel directly which in turn provides the means for me to acquire new products for review. So go ahead, have a look and thanks for using my links. Thanks for taking the time again to watch this video, stay tuned and see you in the next one.